Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you will see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about a movie. It's been a long time. Uh, the new Netflix comedy, You People. It's uh, written and directed by Kenya Barris. I think it's also written by Jonah Hill. So co-written by Jonah, Jonah Hill and Kenya Barris. And I believe directed by uh, Kenya Barris. It stars Jonah Hill, Lauren London, Eddie Murphy, Nia Long, David Duchovny, Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Like they, they got some big names for this one, man. Um, pretty big star-studded cast. Uh, I generally don't do movie reviews on here, and it's not because I don't like movies. Movies are kind of like my, uh, my original love, but it's just from the fact that anytime I do a movie review, it doesn't get any fucking plays. So I'm like, I'm not gonna waste my time, but I watched it. I figured, you know, I got the time. Let me hop on here and talk about it. And who knows? It's been a long time since I did a movie review. Maybe this one will get some plays and I'll change my mind. A actually, I think the last time I did a movie review was also an Eddie Murphy movie. It's probably coming to America too. That might have been the last time I did one. I don't I don't know. No, um, Doom was probably the last time. Anyway, um, they tried out a lot of comedic... They tried out a, a lot of other great comedic actors in this as well. Uh, too many for me to even name, to remember. Uh, like Sam Jay is in this. Uh, she's in, she actually plays a big role. She's not like a guest star. She's in it. She's in a lot. Um, Mike Epps is in this, just to name a couple. Lots of big names. And anytime someone shows up, they're funny. So like anybody you see, anytime you see somebody you know, you can expect to have a good time with that character. But this movie's gonna be tough for me to talk about because on one hand, I did enjoy it, but on the other hand, it's actually a pretty mediocre movie <laughs> because there's a lot to not like here. But at the end of the day, this is how I judge comedies. And I know you guys who, who, who have been a long time, long time fans of this channel know how I can like really break down some shit, right? But when it comes to comedies, the only thing I'm breaking down is, is the shit funny or not? But I was watching this and I think it's just, I, I have an eye for it now just from, I've been doing this, I've been doing this channel for two years. I've been watching movies for my whole fucking life. I feel like I have an eye for certain things and there's things I noticed that since I had the time, I'm like, let me get on camera and talk about it. And if this gets plays, great. If it doesn't, fuck it. But uh, like I said, there's a, not to, a lot to not like here, but there's nothing that's particularly bad. Just some things that are kind of like, eh, I don't, I don't particularly care for that. Um, so the concept of cultural differences making it difficult for black people and white people to see eye to eye done that like ad nauseum there's like eight million movies or tv shows that at least grapple with the topic of like the differences between <laughs> black people and white people like a completely unimaginative concept this is even the idea of like interracial uh kids getting together falling in love but their parents don't like the fact that they're dating someone of the other race tired as fuck that storyline like i <laughs> like tired as fuck the only reason I had interest in this movie was because of this fucking cast. Because that is a tired fucking concept. And then the movie itself 
it's constructed in a way, and it's very noticeable, that feels... It feels like an extended episode of Saturday Night Live. Like what I and what I mean by that, I don't mean it's like skits, but like it's like moves from uh like setup to setup, right? Like it's less of a movie. It feels like less of a movie where you're like watching this story and more of like a collection of um awkward encounters that they just place back to back. Where it's like let's get let's get let's pair this character. Keeping in mind how many names did I give for for the main stars of the movie? The well the two. The two kids, the you know Jonah Hill and Lauren London, and the four parents. So we'll say six, right? Those six characters, like, if it wasn't for them, I I, I wouldn't even be. This is not working. Um, and then the movie feels like it's constructed in a in a way that's very noticeable that feels almost like a uh, like an extended SNL sketch. And I don't mean like it has skits, but I mean like it feels like less of a movie and more like awkward encounter after awkward encounter after awkward encounter. Like we got the six names that I gave at the top, right? The six main stars of the movie. It's almost like the movie is constructed of like how, how many different ways can we match up these six different people and make them have awkward encounters? Like, all right, let's get Jonah and Eddie and we'll have awkward encounter that's scene one. And then we're going to have Nia Long. Did I even mention Nia Long when I listed the, the names? Uh, okay, I think I did. But let's get Nia Long with Lauren London. And then let's get Nia Long with David Duchovny. And then let's get David Duchovny with... Like, and, and like pairing these people up and making awkward... Uh, these awkward encounters. And like even that's not really a problem. But here's the thing. Like when this works, it fucking works. Like I mean when this is funny... It's really fucking funny. And it, 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 I mean, Eddie Murphy, the first time Eddie Murphy shows up in this movie, I fucking yelped because this motherfucker was so funny. And it'd been so long since I'd seen Eddie Murphy in something like this, where he got a chance to like have a bit of a foul mouth and all that kind of shit. Like, I don't know. I think it, it was almost like I had forgotten that he, that this version of Eddie Murphy was in there. So for get, to get to see that immediately, I thought was great. Uh, but when it doesn't work, like, there's a scene in the car where Eddie Murphy's character is trying to get Jonah Hill's character to say the N-word. That is a really bad scene. And, like, it's bad because it's a very remedial fucking gag. Like, oh, let me see if I can trick this guy into saying this, trick this white guy into saying the N-word. Like, that's of, like, that, like this, that bit just came off as if it was written by, like, a 12-year-old. But then, on top of that, and this is the issue that I have with the writing here... Uh, Jonah Hill's character, Ezra, is someone who is, he's white, but he's very much, uh, as he says, he's like, he's in the culture, right? He, he's, he's all about the black culture and he understands it. He's not going to fall for some trick to get him to say the N word. He's it, like that character that, that was in this movie, Ezra would have done, would have said, I see what you're doing here. Like, I'm not going to say it. Like you don't even try Like that's what that character would have done. But because he wanted to do this remedial fucking gag, he betrayed who that he being whoever wrote it, whether that was Kenya Barris or that was Jonah Hill, whoever wrote that bit, betrayed that character because that's not what that character would have done in that situation. And they did it. They they betrayed that character in the interest of making pulling off this gag. But the gag's not funny. The gag, like I said, the gag's remedial as fuck. So it's like that's the that's when I say the the movie is 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 kind of mid. It's like the highs are so high. But the lows are present, and they're pretty fucking low, too. They're not as low as the highs are high, but there's some lows here that just don't really work. But I think, at the end of the day, that's any comedy, though, right? You're going to have the bits that work, and you have the bits that don't. Do the bits that work work enough for you to be like, I fuck with this movie? Or is it just kind of like the, the bits that don't work outnumber them, and you're just kind of like, eh, I don't really feel, feel any way about this. But my point is, like, that's, that's a comedy, right? Some bits are going to work, some aren't. But what I think actually harms this movie, it's not the, the bits that don't work. Every, every movie's going to have that. But what happens in a lot of these comedies today where they, uh, you look and you see this comedy is like two hours long and shit instead of like an hour and 25, 30 minutes. This comedy is like two hours long. And I think um, what they're doing, what they've been doing lately, when I say lately over the past, we'll say that since 2000, post 2000, they will kind of like front load the comedy in the movie and then the last 30 to 45 minutes will be super serious, kind of like resolving all of the shit that was like underplayed when they were front-loading the comedy. 
Like, so all that, like, the, the, the storyline that they don't, they don't really give too much attention to because they're focusing on the comedy. The, sto the, the last 30, 45 minutes, the comedy goes to the back burner and the story moves up and becomes more prominent. And I think in that, in a general sense, I think hurts comedies today when they do that because you don't want to watch a comedy and feel like the last 30, 45 minutes aren't funny regardless of what they're doing. You don't want to feel like the final third of the movie isn't funny. But with this one specifically, what I think it did wrong was like, it spent the entire fucking act being a goddamn episode of Full House, bro. Like, I'm not shitting you. This shit had, again, those same six characters, pairing them up, having them do these monologues. You've been... Tri All I wanted to do was please you, intolerant parent. And you've been totally mean to me. And you've mistreated me. And now I'm going to stand up to you, goddammit. <laughs> and then they do that with Jonah Hill, with her standing, with him standing up to Eddie Murphy's character. And they're like, all right, cut. Now, Lauren London, you're going to go stand up to Julia Louis-Dreyfus' character. And then she says the exact same goddamn thing thematically, but like conceptually, but not those exact same words. But, you know, I was being myself. You were being a shitty white person to me. And you didn't know it, but I don't appreciate it. You know, that big monologue. And then the, the problem is they're playing like sappy fucking full house music while they're saying it, and then they keep cutting to, like, the person that's being talked to, looking shocked that the person is saying this to them. So it's like Jonah Hill's going off. You're hearing sappy full house music. Then they show Eddie Murphy on the screen looking like, oh, I can't believe I hurt his feelings. And it's, like, so fucking corny. Like, diabetes on deck for the last half hour of this shit because it's sweet and fucking corny. Like, it's so fucking, it's so bad that last, like, half hour that it, but for me... I can't, like, turn to somebody and go, hey, uh, is you people worth watching? Because in the back of my mind, I keep thinking about how fucking shitty the last half hour was. And I'm like, why is this, like, a 90s sitcom now? <laughs> like, it's like, I've learned a lesson about treating people poorly because of their skin color. <laughs> and it's, we've learned that we were shitty parents. Like, it's so fucking corny. And then, with about 20 minutes left, I paused it. I, I didn't know this 20 minutes left. I just paused it. And I, I didn't say anything to my wife. I'm watching this with my wife. I paused it just to see how much time was left. And I wanted to like mentally make note of how much time is left. I didn't say anything to my wife. And that's because my wife doesn't like for me to shit on things she's enjoying. Now, granted, I was enjoying the movie. And at the end of the day, I did enjoy the movie. I thought the last half hour was shitty. And there's a lot of jokes that fall flat. But again, the highs are so high that it, I do kind of recommend this movie. Because like the highs are like, it's, it's really fucking funny when it's working. But, um... I paused it because like I, I, I was prepared to shit on something, but I'm like, I don't really want to do it because she might get upset because maybe she's not seeing what I'm seeing yet. So she's not going to be feeling me be it super critical while she still enjoyed it. So I paused it. Movie ends. I'm like, you want to know why I paused it? I paused it because with 20 minutes left after they'd done the speeches where Jonah Hill's character gives his speech to Eddie Murphy's, Lauren London gives his speech to, uh, I'm sorry, his speech. Lauren London gives her speech to Julia louis Drivers' character, then the two characters break up. I don't have to tell you, because you already know, I, I know you already know, the two main characters broke up with the, with 20 minutes left in the movie. What do you think happened? The, the parents went, we were shitty parents to them. We have to get them back together ourselves, and we got to trick them into seeing <laughs> that, that we were wrong and that they need to get back together and be with each other. It was so fucking predictable and corny. I'm like, and I paused it. My point in pausing it was like, I paused it. I saw those 20 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I think that's enough time for them to do the shitty, uh, we realized our mistake and now we got to get them back together ourselves. And that's exactly what happened. So like, at the end of the day, funny as fuck. It really is. When it works, when it works. It's not consistently funny as fuck, but when it's funny, it's funny as fuck. Like really, really high moments. But the lows, like I said, really fucking remedial gags at times. Um... Uh, and then I think most importantly, uh, the, that, that, that final, that final act being, like I said, being like a 30 fucking minute ep black ass full house episode that really fucked the movie up for me. Like I really left it with a bad taste in my mouth. And again, it has a very generic setup. It has a very generic structure, a very generic template, all kind of shit you've seen before. But again, it's elevated from this cast. This cast is incredible. Bunch of really funny motherfuckers, man. That's really all it is. So, like, at the end of the day, right back to what I said at the beginning of the video, is it funny or not? I'm going to say yeah. 
yeah, there's some moments where there, it's not funny, but that's any comedy. And again, the highs where it's funny, it really fucking works. So is it funny? Yes. Is it a good movie? No. But <laughs> that's, that's just what I think. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys <laughs> whenever I do another movie review in a couple of years. But I, no, I'm probably going to do some more movie reviews. I plan on um, uh, doing like an Oscar preview uh, before the Oscars, uh, I believe they're in March. They might be in late February. Plan on doing an Oscar preview if I wa after I watch a few more of the Oscar nominees. But I will give you guys a sneak preview real quick. As of right now, Banshees of Inner Sharon is probably my favorite movie of uh, 2022. So uh, that's a little sneak peek of my, my movie taste. And I will see you guys, whatever I see you guys, to talk about another movie. And until then, peace.